So, um, like maybe a couple of years ago, I did a video about Sartre's transcendence of, transcendence of the ego. And, you know, I'm kind of like looking at back at some of my previous videos and kind of wanting to maybe some, some of them redo them or at least revisit, revisit the topics because it was kind of brought to my attention that that video was lackluster, if you want to use that word. But that's kind of what I was getting. Um, so I want to, in, the, in this video, to kind of give a brief, a brief overview of what Sartre does in his writing, Transcendence of the Ego, uh, <clears throat> and kind of just discuss a little bit what his phenomenology of all of that is, and his, his, the influence of phenomenology on him and stuff like that. Um, so it was brought to his, it was brought to his, uh, his attention of uh, this new kind of this then new kind of philosophy called phenomenology where you could just you know look at something and you know look at, look at things the way you see them and make philosophy out of that you know um take what you see or what is given to you and um derive your philosophy from that you know and drive your philosophy around the phenomena if you will because that's what that's what phenomenology is phenomenology is of course the kind of philosophy that was brought about by Edmund Husserl and um, mostly he kind of he did that <clears throat> by this epoche or this bracketing where we don't try to ask questions about mind dependence or mind independence we um, try to um, do philosophy based on what is given to us uh, we don't try to inquire about the the um, outer experience, or this, the transcendent the, trans the transcendent ex existence of it. We don't inquire about as to whether it, as to whether it exists outside of our minds. We just work with what we are given and go from there. Now, um, Transcendence, according to Sartre, is kind of a extra experiential point. Transcendence, or transcendental in the way that Husserl says it, is that it's something that exists inherently, that is beyond experience, or to some extent beyond experience. So in a way, Husserl didn't even, you know, it's often, Husserl is often looked at as, you know, he didn't even have, you know, an adequate phenomenology, and it didn't do what it was supposed to do because of stuff like the, stuff like Husserl's tr transcendent, tr transcendental ego, his trans transcendental idealism um so you know it's kind of looked we, we you know some certain people like sartre have looked back on husserl and looked at him as possibly having a metaphysics embedded into his phenomenology that is extra 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 experiential um and the transcend the transcendental ego that husserl has um argued is extra experiential the ego is a there's it's there's an ego that is behind um, the stream of consciousness that we have. Um, <clears throat> there's a self point that or a self, a inherent you know um, sort of absolute self that does exist behind our stream stream of consciousness, um, and that is something that Sartre doesn't doesn't agree with. And in a way, you know, in a in a way, Husserl did have his have a metaphysics that was embedded into his phenomenology, which is in a, which can be looked at as a reason why Husserl's phenomenology didn't su didn't succeed didn't succeed. And you have people like Heidegger and Sartre, um, you know, and people even people like Aaron Gervich and um, people like that who kind of used his concept for their for for different purposes because they didn't feel Husserl's. Um, phenomenology was adequate enough to do what Husserl wanted it to do. Um, and Sartre, that's kind of what Sartre is kind of getting at here, is that, you know, we should purely try to do philosophy, do, phenom do, do phenomenology by what is given to us, and not have a phenomenology, or not, or not have a metaphysics embedded into our phenomenology, which does kind of govern that. I mean, there, there can be a metaphysics, but not a metaphysics that is transcendent. Um, a, an ego or a self emerges well after the flow of consciousness um, and 
is is well underway. So first we have a pre-reflective consciousness, a stream of consciousness where aware oh, I am just experiencing things and I'm not, you know, I'm just, you know, um, I experience the taste of pancakes. I, I experience, you know, how smooth the table is or I experience, you know, things. That's a pre-reflective consciousness and that's kind of what we have first and with a pre, with a pre-reflective consciousness you don't have a sense of self yet you just have this stream of consciousness where i see this i experience that and you just that's just how you go on and a reflective consciousness is you're recognizing that you're recognizing that you are experiencing something um or thinking about thinking um and that reflective consciousness comes well after you know your your stream of consciousness is well underway and that through a reflective consciousness that that's how a self forms and a self is not external or it's not prior to what is given to us we, you know or we we it's not external or prior to the you know what is really given to us really so and thus that's through that in that in that way we can really kind of do a phenomenology that is based on what is given to us and only that um Husserl had a phenomenological ecology and that's in uh, this book his critique of, Med his critique of Med meditations um where um phenomenology is done you know in a way based around the, the ego and he, he does kind of use the term egology in, in, in other works this is the primary i guess the one of the primary works that i would see him that i would think of him using that in um sartre wants to have it wants to advocate a non-egological a non a non-egological phenomenology um So, Sartre in this work references Descartes and kind of states that Descartes is wrong because, as you know, as you know, the famous ego cogito argument: "I think, therefore I am." Um, in this, in the second meditation of Descartes' first, first, their meditation on first philosophy, um, what Descartes is understanding is that he is doubting, he is doubting what he has previous, previously believed. And he um, is sort of, you know, recognizing that he is thinking. And how can you have thoughts without owners? That's one way of putting it. There's, you know, there's better ways of talking about Descartes. But you can't have a thought without having a self is basically what he's getting at. Um, but Sartre is kind of saying that Descartes, I think, therefore I am, is a backwards thing. Um, that thinking doesn't, doesn't necessitate selfhood. Uh, you can have a pre-reflective consciousness without having a self, uh, or without having an ego that is there. Um, you know, uh, people like, you know, Husserl in this his Critique of Meditations does advocate a absolute thinking substance, and that's what Descartes advocated with his ego, and that's you know Husserl is kind of taking. Descartes as a jumping off point um, into his own his own philosophy and Sartre is looking at Husserl and Descartes you know as you know there is no external prior thinking substance uh, there's a pre pre pre, pre 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 reflective consciousness that thus once you have a reflective consciousness then you then you then you develop a self or selfhood or ego um, and for Husserl, you know, the, the common thing, the common thing that you want to recognize with Husserl is that Husserl had the idea of essence is prior to existence. You know, Husserl had a, has a, had, had a, had a metaphysics of essences, um, and, you know, kind of having a metaphysics of essences and, uh, a eidetic phenomenology, um, you know, where we have essences and we have absolute forms of being, you know, and he doesn't say it like an absolute, absolute form of being, but he thinks of things, he he discusses things as transcendental, and stuff like that. And 
um, Husserl discusses that the essences are prior to existence, and he kind of advocates those 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 metaphysical entities called essences. Um, while people like Heidegger and Sartre say that they say that existence is prior to essence, you exist before you know, you you talk about as to how things as to how things exist as they are given to you, before you kind of do any sort of essential fun, essential or or or, or eidetic metaphysics. <clears throat> The I appears in reflective consciousness, constituted in reflective acts of, of consciousness, thus recognizing what you are thinking about, or recognizing that you are doing something, you know. Um, you have, we have two kinds of self-awareness. We have positional self-awareness, where a, a person S is directly aware of, of O. That's, you know, if I'm looking at, you know, a, a glass, I'm having direct awareness of it, and I have my focus and my direct consciousness directed at it, where we have non-positional self self awareness, where we have we have implicit awareness, where you know I'm focusing, I'm gonna be focusing on the glass, and I have I'm having positional self awareness, um, you know, where I'm focusing on the, this one thing and this object O, oh, where even though I'm also aware and conscious of, conscious of the other things that are around me, and that's kind of Consciousness, you know, is non-positional self-awareness. That's kind of what he what he argues. Um, so, in a way, Husserl had his uh, had his ontology separate from his phenomenology. Husserl had a ontology or 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 a metaphysics that he developed outside of his phenomenology and that's also the way I look at it when I read his readings or read his his writings Sartre wants to make those things as one if we have any ontolo if we have any ontological commitments we get that from our phenomenology and our phenomenology and ontology is merged into one that way we have more freedom and more responsibility for our actions and for what we see and Basically, everything is, you know, we have more freedom and, and responsibility in everything. So, that, and, um, you know, Sartre, before his, um, ex before his existentialism had a, had a good amount of writings on phenomenology like this, and his, you know, his preface to being and nothingness, and his intent value, and a couple other, couple other writings, and, that's kind of what he was doing. He was kind of trying to make phenomenology do what it was originally supposed to do, before, you know, you know, even though he sort of kind of corrupted it with his transcendent with his transcendental stuff. So, let me know if you have any questions. Um, I whenever you comment, I get a I get an email, and if your comment is constructive, then I always respond because I get it immediately. So, thank you.